So a few other students, myself and Dr. Udrea, who is a professor here, we came up with a method for computing the gravitational field of irregular shaped bodies, especially asteroids and comets. Now, the method that we used is finite element modeling, which addresses the volumetric uh, approximation techniques. Now, they're fairly computational efficient, but not only in doing so, not only we improved this efficiency bar, but also increased the accuracy of the output data. So here I have a small animation to show you how the whole process is and how do we get the final output geometric body. What we see here is our subject asteroid, and that's the manifold, that's the surface of the asteroid, which is eventually going to go into the polyhedral shape model that defines the facet and the nodes, which internally meshes and converts and gives you the final geometrically approximated model. Now, we use this model and simulate the gravitational field using potentials, differentials, gradient, you know, and all the good stuff, and then finally get the stable orbits around it. And yes, that, that is a stable orbit, by the way, for 15 days. So here, my subject asteroid is a recently explored asteroid named 25143 Itokawa, which JAXA, Japan's space agency, Hayabusa satellite explored. And this was the first ever sample collection mission, which was successfully executed. And last year, we got the sample back, the capsule back, a greatest achievement. But today's talk is not about what we achieved. Today's talk is about future. And that's why I have compiled a few reasons, you know, according to my knowledge, why we should explore these small bodies. So before we dive down, you know, before we dive down into the main core reasoning, I want to give you a quick overview of how affordable these near-Earth objects are with respect to mission planning and requirement. What we see here is a small table with a specific mission and its appropriate delta V. Now, delta V in astrodynamics is just a change in velocity that also addresses how much propulsion you're going to be using for the entire mission. Politically, it's just one of the terms used in space economics. So if you're planning a mission, you might want to keep this number low before submitting your contract to the higher-ups because they won't fund you if it's high. <laughs> now, we can see clearly that if we plan a mission from a low-Earth orbit to a near-Earth object, uh, delta V is competitively lower than a mission to Moon or Mars. Now, this gives us a very good excuse why we should explore them. But knowing these figures, knowing these facts, why did we never think of implementing the idea? Well, it turns out we didn't actually discover that many asteroids back in the day. This is a picture from 1980, and I'm not sure if it's clear, but we only see, we only discovered a couple of thousand asteroids. But as our technology evolved, our ground observatories improved, we did more and more space-based oriented projects like NEAR, Phoenix, Shoemaker. We learned more and more about them, we explored them, and today we estimate more than 1.3 million near-Earth objects and asteroids in our whole solar system, including the main belt. Now this high population creates a very, very active environment. And if you, if, you, if you account a simple chemistry terminology where you have a small glass and you fill that up with a lot of particles, they'll have a high probability to collide. Apply the same terminology here, well, a lot of asteroids here, especially the red and yellow ones, are potentially hazardous to Earth. And that drives me to my first reason, planetary defense. <laughs> yeah, nice little picture. But we as humankind are the only pioneers in this solar system, and I think it is our right to save Earth. Now, I'm pretty sure everybody has seen this movie, or Megadon, and Bruce Willis, fantastic actor, by the way. <laughs> but the real question is, at this point, do we really need another Bruce Willis at that time? I hope not. <laughs> what we can do is be cautious, you know, understand them, learn them, and God forbid, if this happens in future, we have already planned beforehand. My second reason on why we should explore them is just science and evolution. These guys are one of the oldest, oldest heavenly bodies in the solar system, and learning them, understanding them, would give us a great insight on the origin of Earth, origin of solar system, and more importantly, origin of life. Coupled to that is my third reason, that is purely human exploration, learning, knowledge, or put it in better words, updating our textbooks. You know, the materials that we have, the knowledge that we had, are more or less based on ground observations or a few missions that we planned. But the curiosity that satisfies us, you know, would be that accurate data, and that accurate data would result in few, few more missions, and that's what we need. Finally, 
the most exciting and the most fascinating reason that drove me to this field personally is raw materials. Now, these bodies are tremendously, tremendously resource-rich. If we talk about platinum-based metals, palladium, platinum, iridium, they have abundance of this metal on these asteroids. And it could provide, you know, it could boost our future economy if we do mining and do a space trade. If we talk about the stable Jupiter Trojan asteroids, they're estimated to have water on them, and that could be used for re future refueling stations for future missions beyond orbit of Jupiter. If we talk about iron ore, well, there are a lot of asteroids in the main belt that are super rich in iron nickel ores. And that brings me to another story. In 2004, the iron ore production of the whole world crossed over a billion metric tons. Now, an average asteroid with, a, a, a asteroid with an average radius of about one kilometer, that could provide us two billion metric tons of iron ore. In fact, there is an asteroid existing in the main belt named the 16th Psyche. That could provide a 17 quadrillion metric ton of iron ore. That is 17 million billion metric ton. Now, that could satisfy our 2004 requirement for the next couple of years. Now, you know, to re reiterate the fact that Jason already said, when we have manufacturing probes up in these guys, it would be, just imagine how cost-effective it would be, how cheap it would be to mine these objects and send the materials directly to the manufacturing probe rather than sending materials every single time from Earth. Space colonization, as I already said, we have, we have found water, we have found oxygen, and it could be the future of space colonization. Now, I've given this all few great reasons and why we should explore them, but what are the current planned missions that are already planned or you know, in progress? In this slide, I have described three different projects. Two of them are current projects which are in progress, and one of them is a future project planned by NASA. So the mission on my right, the Osiris Rex mission, is a planned mission by NASA, which is, which is supposed to execute in 2016. This is going to be the first mission or sample collection mission from the United States, the next giant leap, I believe. The mission that's in the middle, the Dawn mission, it's exploring current asteroid Vista 4, and we have a beautiful picture right there. We just got it a few months ago. Finally, we have European Space Agency's Rosetta mission. Now, it just did a couple of months ago, it just did a fly, fly by near flyby to this asteroid, which is called 21 Luteria. But the whole mission, the Rosetta mission, was designed to explore comets and it's eventually, in a few years, it's going to be exploring this comet, that's 67P Churyumov. Finally, you know, I would like to end my speech by saying that I came here to inspire the space cadets in you. And if you think that I did, you know, I don't think so this speech needs a conclusion. The final answer is asteroids. That's the answer. <laughs> and, you know, it is always going to be the beginning until we don't find a way to explore them and execute every bit of idea in us. Thank you, everyone.